In this example, let us find out the electric field due to an infinitely long thin line of charge. This is an insulator. Uh, so think of about it as if you have a long insulating wire carrying a charge, positive charge Q. The charge density is lambda coulomb per meter. And you want to find out what is the electric field due to this long thin insulating wire at a distance r or at point p which is at a distance r from the wire. So one thing you should notice is that though we are showing uh, the wire having some significant radius here, it is essentially the radius is very small when compared to the length of the wire. So you can ignore the radius of the wire or the thickness of the wire. Now, this is a symmetrical charge distribution. Uh, the symmetry is cylindrical because the wire essentially is like a cylinder. And so, uh, let us see, let us try to take a Gaussian surface which is also cylindrical and passing through point P. So, this is my Gaussian surface. And it is a cylinder. The radius of the cylinder is the distance r, and this is the radius of this is my top surface of the cylinder, this is the bottom surface of the cylinder. Let us see how we can write Gauss law over this cylindrical surface. It is a closed surface, the top surface is also closed, the bottom surface is also closed, and this is the curved side of the cylinder. So I have integral e dot dA is equal to q enclosed over epsilon zero. However, now, my dA is made up of three surfaces. One is the top surface, one is the bottom surface of the cylinder, and third is the curved surface of the cylinder. And so I can write this as integral E dot dA is equal to integral E dot dA, where dA is my curved surface, plus integral E dot dA over the top surface, which is a circle, plus integral E dot dA over the bottom surface. Let us see what my integral here will be. The top surface, or before that, let us see how the E of this wire is. And to do that, really, let us take the top view of it, looking from the top. So, in the top view, my wire will look something like this. And I'm taking the top view of my wire, will look round. This is the cross-section radius R carrying charge Q, uh, sorry, carrying a positive charge with charge density lambda coulomb per meter. And my Gaussian surface, if I draw, is going to look circular because that's the top view of a cylinder. And this is my Gaussian surface with radius R looking from the top. Electric field emanating from this wire is going to be radial. And secondly, we can say that because this wire is infinitely long with a uniform positive charge, electric field at the distance r is going to be constant. So the electric field is going to be constant over the curved surface of the cylinder. So what I'm going to have is electric field is acting radially out from the wire. Now, secondly, let us see how dA is going to be. First, let us think about the curved surface. For the curved surface, at any point on the curved surface, let me take this as an example. So this is my cylinder, and at any point on the cylinder, so if I have, let me use my hand, this is my cylinder. At any point on the cylinder, my dA is going to be perpendicular to the cylinder, perpendicular to the surface and acting radially. So I can say my dA is acting radially outward, and this is my dA, and so my E is also acting radially outward and this is my E. So over the curved surface I can write that E and dA are parallel to each other and integral E dA essentially becomes E dA. E dot dA becomes E dA. We also said that at any point on at a distance r E is constant and so I can say that E is con constant and can come out of the integral and the integral just remains E dA and this was my total integral ED. Let us see, this is for my curved surface. Let us see what happens for the top surface. For the top surface, my dA, this is a closed surface, so my dA is in the 
this direction. However, E due to my thin wire yet remains in a radial direction. So E is yet in a radial direction. And so the angle theta between E and DA is 0. Cos, uh, sorry, E and DA is 90 and cos 90 is 0. Hence, the flux to the top surface is 0. Similarly, for the bottom surface, this is my bottom surface, and my DA is going to be acting vertically downwards, is the down circle, the bottom circle of my cylinder. But my E yet remains radial, and again my theta is 90, and so the flux to the bottom surface is also 0. So, I can argue that due to this thin wire, integral the flux through my Gaussian cylinder essentially boils down the flux to the curved sides of the cylinder and the flux over the top and bottom surface of the cylinder are zero because those two surfaces are parallel to the direction of E. And that is equal to, let us see what is the area of the curved section. Area of the curved section is 2 pi r, which is the radius, uh, 2 pi r, which is the circumference, times the length. Let me assume that I have picked the Gaussian cylinder with length L. And so my integral dA then becomes 2 pi r times L. And this is Q enclosed over epsilon 0. So what is Q enclosed? Charge density is lambda coulomb per meter. So Q enclosed will be lambda times L, which is the length of the wire enclosed inside my Gaussian surface over epsilon 0. So I can write E equal to 1 over 2 pi epsilon 0 lambda over R. And so in other words, I can write this as 2k because k is 1 over 4 pi epsilon 0 lambda over r and this is my electric field at a distance r from an insulating wire which is infinitely long and carries a charge density lambda coulomb per meter square a uh, lambda coulomb per meter now one important thing that we must mention here is that we always said that this wire is infinitely long why is that important because if my wire was not infinitely long, say if I have a wire which is something like this, then my E is not going to be uniformly radial. It is not going to be only in this direction. The way my E is going to be is, is going to be something like that. And so at every point, I cannot argue that I cannot argue that E is parallel to the top and bottom surfaces or that E is parallel to dA over the curved surface since the direction of E is continuously changing. So there cannot, since this E is not uniform, it is very difficult to find a Gaussian surface over which we can use our rules which say that we are going to find E which is constant because E is not constant certainly and we cannot again say that E has some uniform direction. It is either parallel to dA or it is perpendicular to dA at every point on the Gaussian surface. And for this kind of examples, we cannot use Gauss law very easily because we cannot reduce this integral to something simple. However, what we can say is that if I have a sufficiently long wire, not necessarily an infinitely long wire, then we can use Gauss law over the center of the wire, which is quite far away from the ends of the wire. And that is a fair enough approximation that if I have a finite wire of considerable length, and if I am considering a small section in the wire which is quite away from the ends of the wire, then I can use this as a fair enough approximation of the electric field at a distance r from the wire. 